happened with all these people come from, my God. Do you know, when I was preparing for this, somebody said to me, you can tell if the audience is going to be a good audience or a bad audience in the first 10 seconds. So thank you very much for your time and the taxi. <laughs> no, you don't, you sound really good. You do, don't clap, I'm going to get cut off. If you don't start clapping and laughing at me, they're going to cut me off. Don't do that. When, uh, when I was preparing for this, I was thinking about, well, what, what can I talk to everybody about that people will understand, that people will warm to and stuff? And I was 49 last week. Oh, oh God, thank you, thank you. This is it, thank you. Like 49. I thought, it's nearly 50, isn't it? 50 is nearly 60, and now I'm nearly 65, I'm nearly So I started to I started thinking about what, what, what's going on around me that's making me feel so old, because I'm only 49. I should they start to notice that all the people, all the really important people in our society look like the 12. Policemen look like the 12, don't they? Doctors and nurses look like the 12. The lap dancers that I go to look like the 18. No, 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 no. So I started thinking about like, like the music and stuff. I like, I like, like you know, like Frank Sinatra and all that kind of stuff. You know, nice gentle stuff. But my kids like rap music and garage and house and shed and back table. I don't know what it's called. All this crazy stuff. And I can't. My dad used to say to me years ago. He used to say, Stephen, if you can't hear the words, it's not a song. Now, that sounded really daft when I was 12, but now that I'm nearly 65, that sounds really weird. Really, really. I'm telling it into me, Dad. I've got two kids, one of them's 21, and the other one's 11, go on, I'm 21. The 11 year old was sitting there a couple of weeks ago talking to one of his mates, one of his girl friends. There's nothing going on, does he tell him? There's nothing going on. One of the girl friends. And the channel away, and it goes over, as dads do, I'm going to embarrass you. You know the way we do it, and it goes over. All right, Jake, who's your, uh, your friend? Who's that then over there? And he said, oh, this is Lisa. So I said, hello, Lisa. You're a lovely girl, aren't you? And she said, all right. excuse me? She said, all right, dog. And I go, what's what, 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 you, are you from abroad or something? Is something? Now, I know she was saying, hello, Mr. Carr. What are you doing today? But I had no understanding of where that comes from. So kids are aliens to me, absolutely alien. The other, the other thing I just want to, I want to tell you about briefly is when I was 14, I went to my first nightclub. Now all my mates were older than me. Terry Jones, I have always not here with I wish he was, but, but Terry Jones was like 18, 19. All the lads were like four or five years older than me, which was great for me, because there's someone to look up to and copy. So when they're out there and they're dancing with the girls, I'm going, that's what you're doing. <laughs> and I'm only 14, so I don't really know. So I says to Terry, look mate, where are we going? And he said, we're going to Grafton. <laughs> now you can tell from the sniggers and there's a woman over there nodding, absolutely nodding away. So she, the Grafton, for those people who don't know, is probably one of the seediest nightclubs in the world. It is, it is one of those places, you're going to go there, you're going to cop off, it's as simple as that. So I don't know this at 14, I'm talking to Terry, Terry, what happens to me today? I don't know how to talk to girls, what do I want to talk about? Talk about any Teddy, what do I talk? I don't know what to talk about. And I'm like, Teddy, I don't know what to talk about. What am I going to talk about? He said, talk about where? Uh, Teddy, uh, I go to school. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'll mix something up. So for about two years while I was going to that place with these lads, I was a male model for living. <laughs> you may have seen the pictures, you may not have seen the pictures. <laughs> but that's one side. So, so we're in there and you know, we're grooving around and all this and dancing away. And I used to be quite fit then. Well, I used to think I was quite fit then. I used to play a lot of rugby, did a little bit of boxing. I used to have a lovely six pack. Why are you laughing? You two sniggered, someone sniggered up. I've now got a party pack, as you can see. I'm working out to, uh, to deal with it, but it's not happening. So uh, I, used to, I used to think I was dead sexy and used to be able to like, sort of dance around the room. My wife's over at the back there, she'll tell you. I could go all night. No way I have to get up three times to go all night. <laughs> yeah. But they, they're in the, we're in the nightclub. We're in, we're in the Grafton, right? We're there in the Grafton. And uh, for those people who've been to Grafton, there's a show of hands to show me who's been to Grafton. Is anyone brave enough to do that? Oh, do you know, I love you. I'm absolutely in love. Sorry, Joe. I'm in love. Oh, but there's some at the back, some stragglers. Going there next. The Grafton had a couple of bars, and those bars were always like 10 people deep. There were always people you could never get in. I never went in. There we go. This, this particular night, this was heckling me, stop it. This particular night, we're all in there, and this, I feel this big sharp pain in the back of my leg, and I turn round, and it's this fellow in the wheelchair. And he was there, he, he was a permanent resident, he was there all the time. And I was probably out, mate, sorry, go ahead, go through. And then you watch him, and he's doing it to every fella, charging him in the leg, so he gets to the bar, and you go, 
So this particular night, and with one of my mates, Del, and Zell talks like that, quite naturally talks like that. Now, the girls love Del, and I'll tell you why well, Del thinks the girls love him, and I'll tell you why Del thinks they love him. Because Del gets a stand-up wash twice a week, whether he needs it or not. <laughs> he went on holiday with us several years ago. We all took two big suitcases. I swear, I swear this, but Del took one sports hold all. And it was one pair of underpants and one pair of socks and a t-shirt. And that was his gear. And he wonders why he didn't cop off. That's a one side. Del's there, and suddenly Del breaks in. Sorry, another way about Del. Del's nickname is Johnson's. And that's because every girl he goes out with takes him to clean it. <laughs> Hey, hey, these are the best hands in it. But Del's standing there, and Del suddenly bursts into hysterics. Oh, ha, 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 ha. So Del, what, what's going on? What's going on? He says, he starts pointing the phone in the wheelchair. And he says, isn't that ironic? He said, what's ironic about it? He said, we're all in here on the pull, and he's the only fella looking for the push. <laughs> Thank you. So, so, getting back to being old. There they are, nearly 65, and I'm talking to a good mate of mine who was just turned 65, and he says, Steve, do some favour me. Shut the fuck up, I'm not getting old, are you? No, come on, I'm getting old, Tony, I am, aren't I? He said, nah, nah. You know when you're getting old and you're 65, when you're my age and all the bits start going a bit, a bit funny for you. And I'm gonna leave you with three pieces of advice, particularly aimed at the fellas, not at the girls. The first one, he said to me, as you get older, never ever miss the chance to have a pee. <laughs> the second one, the second one is when you get an erection, use it really, really quickly. <laughs> and the final one is, ne and it's interesting because we've had this all night, never, ever, ever trust a fart. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>